from East Flat Rock, North Carolina, we welcome you to Faith in God Missions with the Rev. Steve and Frida Bishop. This program has been paid for by Faith in God Missions, a ministry working to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and preach the gospel in the United States and the foreign fields. Join us now as we worship the Lord together in word and song. It's going to be a good day, I can feel it coming on. Yeah. When I woke up this morning, I knew what was on the way. I could tell by how I felt inside, the sun was here to stay. Someone up in heaven must be smiling down on me. Because I felt so excited from my head down to my feet. I'm looking for the future, and I know God is in control. I'm looking to enjoy this ride. I think I'm on the road. It's gonna be a good day. I can feel it coming on. Oh, thank you, Lord. All my darkest nights have come and gone. I might just break out the bed. I might just sing a song. It's gonna be. Good day, I can feel it coming on. All my expectations and possibilities. Dream that I've been dreaming, he has made reality. I've made a resolution that I'll dwell here on the good. And he'll send out a blessing, just like he said he would. When I look down this tunnel, I can finally see the light. I've got a funny feeling everything will be all right. It's going to be a good day. I can feel it coming on. Mm -hmm. All my darkest nights have come and gone. I might just break out laughing. I might just sing a song. It's going to be a good day. It's gonna be a good day
and thank you for tuning in to Faith in God Missions. My name is Joe Lund, and I want to take a moment to thank you. I want to first start off by thanking you for your prayers. And I mean that with all sincerity. That's our priority, is thanking you for praying. Thanking you for as you've asked God to give us wisdom. Thanking you as, as you've asked God to lead, guide, and direct this ministry. We know that if God is not in something, it's not worth doing. So thank you for your prayerful support. I also want to take a moment to thank you as you have given financially, whether that has been for Thanksgiving or Christmas meals, whether that has been allowing us to purchase blankets and toys, whether that has put tires on a van that allows us to go on a trip to take the gospel to the different parts of the country that we go to, or have allowed us to purchase airfare to get down onto the field and minister there in the foreign countries. So many different ways that you have supported this ministry, and we want to thank you for that. We want to thank you for your belief in the work that is being done and the importance of faith in God, taking the message of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Thank you for your support. Who can speak to a cripple and stand right up and walk? And who can cause the deaf and mute to hear and start to talk? And who can calm a fevered brow by saying that it be? With a little bit of clay touch in a way that blinded eyes can see, I'm telling you he can. Know that he'll stand by your side when the world comes crumbling in. For no one's ever done what he's done. He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. What can cause an old man that's about to say goodbye to lift up both those dying hands with a tear running from his eye? With his loved ones gathered all around him, he can smile and say, Don't fear, for the one that's brought me through this storm will lead me on from here. I'm telling you, he can, and I know that he'll stand by your side when the world comes crumbling in. For no one's ever done what he's done. He laid down his life, but he rose to live again. I'm telling you he can, and I know that he'll stand by your side when the world comes crumbling in. For no one's ever done what he's done, he laid down his life but he rose to live again. He's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He heals the broken hearted and sets the captive free. He made the limb to walk again and he caused the blind to see. He's able, he's able. I know he's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. It's Jesus, it's Jesus, his name is Jesus, this man named Jesus died for you and me. He'll never ever leave you, he'll stay right by your side. It's Jesus, it's Jesus, his name is Jesus, this man named Jesus died for you and me. It's Jesus, it's Jesus, his name is Jesus, this man named Jesus died for you and me. What to do? Be faithful, knowing that he is soon coming back. You know, when Brother Doug called me after me about preaching this morning, as quick as he started talking to me about preaching, the Lord just laid something on my heart. 
And I got some questions to ask you this morning. Why do we go to church? Why do we go to church? Because some people go to church just because they want to be seen. Or they want to see what somebody's wearing. They want to see what kind of car somebody's driving. It's the only reason they go to church. Some people go to church and think, if I go to church, that makes everything all right. Makes me feel better about myself. Because we're brought up to go to church, and maybe you were not brought up to go to church. I was brought up in church. I was 8 to 10 years old, I was brought up in church. But many people were not brought up that way. Many people were brought up, they didn't have to go to church. But they think now, as we got a bit older, you know, if I go to church, it improved my personality. People will like me better, and they'll accept me better. That's what a lot of people think. If I go to church, everything's going to be all right. You know, but can I tell you today, just going to church don't make everything all right. Going to church don't save you. All the blood of Jesus Christ will save you. Yeah. Perhaps you may be thinking, make, make me a better person. <laughs> may make me feel good about myself. Those are all the wrong reasons to go to church. We don't need to go to church for none of those reasons. We should be going to church to worship God. Going to church to be in His presence. Amen. To receive something from His Word. To help build our faith. To help us grow spiritually. To help fellowship with other believers. You know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. <laughs> That's why we should be going to church. Amen. We grow with fellowship with other people. We grow by hearing God's word. That's all we just say. You got to hear God's word to get to know, you, to know that you're a sinner. You got to know you're a sinner before you can get saved. He want, Lord wants us to serve Him. He shows us all through the Bible. He gives us a choice. We can serve Him or we can reject Him. We can serve Him and receive all of His blessings. We can reject Him and receive His judgment. And soon, I believe very soon, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. He's getting ready to call his church away. Yes. But he's only calling for those that are looking for him. Those that are watching for him. They're waiting for him. He's not, when he calls, a lot of people still be sitting on that church bench because they think that was all they needed, being on some of that church bench. The Lord tells us in John 3 and 3, he told Nicodemus, he said, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In John 3, 16, it tells us how we can see the kingdom of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He also tells us in Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He don't say you might be. He says you shall be saved. Yeah. We just got to put our trust in him and call upon him, take to his word. Recently, I was reading a book by, by Jim Zavola. The book thing was Storm. Was storms. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote something, read something here that was in his book. This is on page 12 of his book on the storm. It was a study done by the Barnard Group in 2012, this was 10 years ago, this study was done. Ten, I don't know what a study is today. But 10 years ago, it said that 46% of churchgoers said, and I quote what they're saying now, it said their life had not been changed as a result of churchgoers. That's a shame. Yeah, That's brother. Shame. This was 10 years ago. And it, and it also says that three out of five attenders, which 61%, said they could not remember a significant new insight gained by attending church. Then one third of those that attended church in the past have never felt God's presence in church. You know, that, that tells me something. That tells me we're losing our light. Our light is getting dim. I'm sure most of you can remember when you had lanterns. You let that lantern, you had that little glow that went on that lantern. You know, that lantern, that glow got sighted up. It didn't put that much light. You couldn't see a whole lot. I'm afraid that's what's happened to a lot of us today. We're letting our light get so dim. We're letting this carriage of this light, we're letting the carriage of this world. Come into our life, and they're starting to make our life go dim. That's what I'm afraid is happening in our churches so many times. We're let we're wanting the world come into the church instead of the, uh, us going into the world showing God's love. Yes. We, we want to compromise and say, "You come on just like you are." God, God loves everybody. And God does love everybody. Amen. And He does want you to come just like you are. But when you leave, you should leave different. You should, you should not leave these doors the same way that you came in these doors. Yeah. You should be, you should be changed. You know, the only way you can get changed is God repent. Jesus Christ is the only one that can change your life. He's the only one that can make that give you a different mindset. When you get changed, you'll be turning around. When you repent, you'll be turning around and going the opposite direction to what you were going to start with. That I can only be done through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, it reminds me when our, about a light getting dim. It reminds me of those 10 virgins we read about in Matthew 25, the first 13 verses of Matthew 25. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like to 10 virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with the lamps. 
While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Not just a few of them, but all ten of them, they all, one of them slumbered and slept. That tells me in their life, they got used to things the way things were, and their light started getting dim. That glow when that light started getting started getting fogged up. It started getting all that sun on it. Just like our lives today. We start getting set. We start letting the cares of this life get in our way of serving the Lord. And we start getting that getting that darkness. Said so all ten of them, all of them slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. We've got to be trimming our lamps today. Yeah. Get, make sure our globes are clean, make sure our life is clean, so our light can shine bright. So then the food was said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. You know, so many people sit on church beings today, the lamp has went out, and they don't even know it. That oil in that lamp represents the Holy Ghost. It represents the Holy yeah. Spirit of God living in us, and we, we don't even realize that we have drifted away from it. We don't realize that just because we're still going to church, that that anointing, that Holy Ghost filled the Spirit that we've got inside of us, it's, it's sort of it's getting hid. We're losing that light. It says, but the wise answer saying, mm -hmm. not so, but there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they were that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your love and for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, because you died for me that I have everlasting life with you, Father. Thank you, Lord, because you live inside and your light should be shining out of me, Lord, that the world can see you through me. Father, we ask you, God, you touch the heart of each one here today, Father. Each one, Lord, may be watched by television, Lord, or listen on the radio, Father, that you would touch their heart and you would touch their lives, Father. That you would have, Lord, call upon you to clean their lives up, Lord, to forgive them their sins and to live for you. In Jesus' love, the name we pray, Lord. If there's one in this building today, Lord, that does not know you. Lord, if there's one in this building today, Lord, that the light's gotten dim. Lord, if there's one that needs to rededicate yourself to you today, Lord, would you help the Lord to surrender to you today? In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you. We love you. You know, Jesus tells us to watch, therefore, because you know not the hour, the day, nor the hour when the Son of Man comes. He didn't say you don't know what year. He didn't say you don't know what century. He said what day. It could be today. Yes. He didn't say, and it could be this hour. It could be before we get out of this church, the Lord calls this church out of here. Yes. I believe in the catching away of the church. I believe in the rapture of the Lamb. Of the yeah. Lamb of God. I believe that's coming. I believe it's very soon coming. We see here with those five of those virgins were wise, five of them were foolish, but every one of them slumbered. Every one of them slept. And that's what I'm afraid we're doing. We're letting our life, we're getting carried away with the lives of this world. The things that are going on in the cares of this life in this world, that we slumber, where our light's getting dim. We don't even realize it until it's too late. But in John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And in Matthew 5 and 14, it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill cannot be hid. You know, Jesus is the light. He ascended to heaven, and we asked him in our heart. He's living in our heart. Our light should be shining. The light of Jesus Christ should be shining out of us. I was telling Preet this morning, early hours this morning, I had a dream. I told Preet, I said, honey, I had a dream I want to tell you about. She said, oh, no. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm tell you. With this dream, I said, I, I dreamed that there was two, two pathways, two, two little walk bridges crossing over this great big river. Two walk bridges. One of the walk bridges was real rough looking. It went up a hill. And then back down on the other side, it just looked it, like you couldn't get across it. And the only thing you see looking across that walk bridge was a dark, gloomy area, a mountainside, rocks, and right on top of that was a cross, Lord Jesus Christ. And then right down below it was another bridge. It was a straight bridge, walk bridge, and it was real wide. It was it. So and you saw, I saw many people across that bridge. And on the other side of that bridge, I told my wife, I told Frida, I said, the other side of that bridge was just pure green grass. It like a nice pasture. And all these people were crossing that bridge, going to that pasture. But you saw very few on this old bridge, like it was real rough looking, like it'd be hard for somebody to cross over. You saw very few going that way, going towards the cross. But you saw a lot walking towards that grass. It was like the Lord told me, he said, Steve, that's what we're doing today. He says, the Bible tells us in Matthew 7, it talks about the straight and narrow gate that leads to heaven. It talks about that wide gate, that broad gate that leads to destruction. 
You know, I don't remember seeing anybody crossing that big wide black gate, that smooth gate, going to that path. I don't remember seeing anybody get to the other side. Some were halfway across that, they disappeared. You know, I believe it's because they didn't make it to the other side. I don't think they made it. Even though that bridge looked nice, I don't believe they made it to the other side because I never saw one. But I can see people as they cross that little narrow bridge. You know, the Bible tells us, in Matthew 7, I looked this up this morning because that dream was so real to me last night or this morning when I dreamed it. So I looked it up when I got up. Matthew 7, verse 13, it says, Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads to life, and few there be that find it. So I looked that up, what that meant. I said, I always thought straight was just something straight. But you know, when you look in the dictionary, that's not what that means. It don't mean it's straight. It means, and I wrote it down in my Bible so I wouldn't forget it, it difficulties. Difficulties. And it says, afflicted, suffering tribulations and trouble. That's straight, that straight gate in a narrow way. That's what it means. Going through difficulties, suffering tribulations and trouble. You know, and I got thinking on that dream, that old bridge, that old wall bridge, it went up and come back down, crossing over that river. And all you saw was that little hillside with a cross on it. And I saw so many people that was crossing and headed straight to the cross. Steve was one of those that was crossing that bridge. I could see, I could see Steve as he was going across. I ran across that river, across that bridge. It's going up and it was going down. It went on the other side. It went back down the other side. But I went right straight to the cross because the cross, that's the only thing. Yes. That's the only hope we have yes. is through the cross. Of the yeah. Lord Jesus Christ. And then all of those people on that nice, that nice fault path crossing over that river. They didn't make it to the other side, that pretty green grass, that patch. They didn't make it. They somewhere along the way, they, they dropped off. You know, that's what we, our light should be shining so bright. Yes. That no matter how, what kind of trials you're going through, no matter what kind of tribulations we're having, no matter what kind of troubles we're having, Jesus Christ is the only way. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only way we can have hope. He's our only hope. He is, he is, the, he is our righteousness. Jesus Christ is the king of kings. The Lord gives us so many places in the Bible. He gives us a choice. That we can serve him or we can reject him. Yes. And I got to thinking, you know, the children of Israel, when they were in bondage, over 400 years, they were in bondage in Egypt. And they were saying, Lord, set us free of this bondage. You know, and God sent Moses. Moses was 80 years old. You say, well, I'm old, Steve. I can't do anything. You know, Moses was 80 years old. And the Lord said, you can go back and lead my people out of Egypt. You know, Moses, his first reply was, Lord, I can't do that. You know, I'm not, I, I don't speak good. It's a like that. I don't speak good. But the Lord said, you're going to go anyway. You're the one I've chosen to bring my people out. He said, I'm going to send you a brother because he can speak good. I'm going to send you a brother. He'll just talk for you. You know, so Moses and Aaron went back. They told Pharaoh to go. But they God's people go out and worship him. Oh, yeah, you know, we know the story. They were rejected. All those times they rejected, all those plagues that came on, they rejected every one of them. But the Lord told Moses, he said, I've got one last thing I'm going to do to Egypt. He said, I want you to, you know, he didn't hide it from them. He told them what was going to happen. He said, the firstborn in every family in Egypt, the firstborn of every cattle is going to die. But he said, for the my people, Moses says now, he said, now you, the Lord told me to take, you take a lamb, a spotless lamb, one of that lineage, that was our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. You take a spotless lamb, you slay him on this such, such day. You take that blood and you sprinkle it on that doorpost on the two sides and across the top. And they're going to run you out of Egypt. They're going to run you out. The people, they had forgotten about that. The Lord, they told them that, that, that to get up, y'all get out of here now. Take take all your cattle. You take everything. You take everybody and y'all get out of our land right now. You know, and that's what they done. They left. But you know, the devil was, he wasn't free. He got them up there and the Lord was leading them up. They got down to that Red Sea. People all remember, they knew this. They got down to the Red Sea and they knew they were stuck. They didn't have anywhere to go. That sea was in front of them. Behind them was that Egyptian army. And they were, they were closing in. But the Bible tells us that the Lord had a cloud to lead him in the daytime. And he had a cloud of smoke or fire to lead him in the nighttime. The Lord said they got the Red Sea and all the people were remembering, you know, the Lord brought us out here to kill us. We could have died right there in Egypt. He just brought us out here. They're going to slay us right here in the Red Sea. But the Lord told them to stretch out his rod. The Lord took that cloud that was leading in the daytime and he put it behind them. You know, I believe that was so much of a fog that they couldn't see nothing. The Egyptian army kept, they couldn't see nothing. And the Lord split those waters. You know, it's still telling how many miles the water split. 
There was a lot of people crossing over, and they all crossed over one night. A lot of people. It's it, miles, I'm sure, the Lord put out the water back, and they crossed on dry ground. Now, all these people knew that. They knew they had a big God. A God that brought them, delivered them out of Egypt, and now he's taking them right across that Red Sea on dry ground. But they got on the other. God's children were in bondage in Egypt's land for many years when they cried unto their father through their pain and through their tears. Then he raised a man named Moses to lead them to the promised land. When Moses said, Lord, I am nothing, God said, just trust me, the great I am. I am thy God, Jehovah, is anything too hard for me? When the water's too high for crossing, I'll be there to part the sea. When the flames of doubt enfold you, I am the fourth man in the fire. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. I am your God, you are my child. Isn't it good to know you belong to him? He'll take care of everything you need. Though we walk through fiery trials, and though we trod the valley low, there's a refuge for God's children and a place where we can go. Just like Moses, I am helpless by myself. I cannot stand, but then I hear the Savior whisper, just trust in me, the great I am. I am thy God, Jehovah, is anything too hard for me when the water's too high for crossing? Thank you for joining us today. This program has been paid for by Faith in God Missions of East Flat Rock, North Carolina, a ministry that's working in the United States and the foreign fields. Please send all correspondence to Faith in God Missions, Post Office Box G, East Flat Rock, North Carolina, 28726. Or visit us on the website at faithingodnc.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Faith in God Missions. Until next time, remember, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son.